Detmold, Western Germany, the home of the 3rd Royal Tank Regiment, British Army of the Rhine. When Ravelli sounds, the 55,000 men in BAOR know it's time to get up, have breakfast, and get ready for a day's training. To keep an army at a peak of keenness and efficiency in peacetime, training must be interesting and realistic. A squadron leader, Captain Farmer, briefs his tank commanders on a day's exercise. A strong armoured enemy faces their squadron, which is concealed on the left of a wood. After the briefing, Captain Farmer inspects his squadron. They won't look so smart when they've been staggering over the countryside all day. One of his tank commanders is Sergeant Gordon Amos from Northampton, who joined the regiment in 1948. These are conquerors and centurions. A centurion weighs about 50 tons, and you can reckon a tank costs a thousand pounds a ton. So if you're praying one of these babies, you've really dropped a clang. Meanwhile, back at the married quarters, it's time for school. Sergeant Amos' wife, Mary, sees their two eldest children onto the school bus. Anne, aged six, and Alan, five. In Detmold, 300 British children between the ages of five and 12 go to the British Families Education Service School. There's a certain excitement about going to school in another country, but the lessons are just the same here as they are at home. And for five-year-old Anne Amos, adding 10 to three is an enormous problem. The youngest Amos, Pete, is safe from school for a couple of years yet. He helps his mother to do the shopping in the nappy store. You can buy almost anything here from a cuckoo clock to a bicycle. When I was in the army, the nappy shop was never like this. Ah, this is more familiar. Sausages and beans, lovely grub. You'll have to wait for yours, chum. But now it's time for action. The CO gives the order, and the tanks deploy into battle position. These Centurion tanks are the main equipment of Britain's armoured regiments. They have a crew of four, a commander, a driver, a gunner, and a loader operator. They can climb a 35 degree slope, or up a three foot step, or over an 11 foot ditch. You can't see much from inside a tank, so the commander keeps his head out as long as possible. The Centurion's 20 pounder gun fires high explosive shells in an artillery roll and armor piercing shells for knocking out other tanks. A few trees are no obstacle to a Centurion. There's a nice bit of firewood for someone. And this is what a tank looks like to the gentlemen of the infantry. The exercise over, a more peaceful use of the gun is Operation Apple Tree. But you've got to be fit to win this race. After a hard day's training, Sergeant Amos goes home to forget about tanks. But not a hope. Tanks run in his family. He's typical of hundreds of highly skilled men serving with the British Army in Germany today. Saturday morning and the RSM's parade. The drum major of the Volunteer Regimental Corps of Drums is Sergeant Amos, a very busy man. The parade over, there's time for a drink in the sergeant's mess before lunch. What do they talk about? About the cost of keeping British forces in Germany? A matter of 130 million pounds a year? Don't you believe it. Charlie's more interested in seeing he gets his triple 20. And now for lunch. This, believe it or not, is an army cookhouse and not for an officer's mess either.
take a look at the menu. Roast beef and Yorkshire fritters, roast pork and apple sauce, grilled pork cutlets, curried beef and rice, fried fish and chips, braised steaks, brown stew and dumplings, duchess, roast and boiled potatoes, French beans and cauliflower. And then for sweet, there's stewed jam pudding, Manchester tart, fruit flan, fruit jellies, apple pie and fruit salad. Nowadays, it's help yourself and come again if you want to. And if you want to know how much all this costs, the army reckons it can feed a man for three and sevenpence a day. But don't expect your wife to do it as cheaply as that. The army can buy in bulk, and she can't. And the army ration allowance for a man eating at home is six and elevenpence a day. Sergeant Amos has Saturday afternoon off, and he and his family visit the famous Eagle Lodge at nearby Burlebeck. For years, Herr Depper has kept eagles and vultures here, perched out in the open air. This eagle is called Sasha. Some of these imperial and white-tailed eagles have a wingspan of seven to eight feet. Herr Depper releases them now and again for long flights over the forest. Sometimes they stay away for several days, but eventually they always return to the lodge. Sergeant Amos has become quite an expert since he's been at Detmold, and he reckons this one is a vulture. But bird watching isn't everyone's fancy on a Saturday afternoon, and as usual in the army, there's plenty of sport going on. You can take your pick. And in winter, there's skiing in the mountains. So in a peacetime army, everyone tries to keep his weekends as free as possible. When the European War ended in 1945, Britain had 28 regiments of the Royal Tank Regiment in Europe. When this parade comes to an end, there will be only four. This is the amalgamation parade of the 3rd Royal Tank Regiment and the 6th. The parade is inspected by Lieutenant General Sir Harold Pyman, Colonel Commandant of the Regiment, who commanded the 3rd of El Alamey. Then the two regiments drive through each other and all the commanders of both regiments salute each other. The flags of the 3rd and the 6th are low. A new regiment is born, the new 3rd Royal Tank Regiment, British Army of the Rhine. 